I'm late. What's up, guys? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? It's so weird to be without delay. Fire away. What's the over-under until how many months you got engaged with Mirth? Ha! <laughs> Did we get an answer on the over-under? I'm not sure. Still play poker for fun with friends? Uh, rarely. Also, just don't get... Yeah, I do, actually. In the bar, in Vlissinga, Vanus. How do you study while using Razor Edge? Do you usually watch one video, then call to action? Do you write down notes? Could you break down a typical training session for you while using Razor Edge? Um, I go over... I watch a video. I watch a video. Um, as soon as I notice something, I pause the video. I write down a specific strategy adjustment in a broader sense. So... I want to get like, I want to word it in a way where it helps me in every way, because usually when you do something wrong, it could be something very specific, but it could also be something in a very broad sense. Like the things that you noticed that me and Ben talked about last time uh, I uploaded the video on YouTube, but make notes, make calls to action. Yes. Uh, resume the video. And um, after I do like an hour of work, whatever, I always take a break and then uh, I read those notes before every session until I feel like I've implemented them in my game. How much did you pay coaching and learning stuff overall in your career? Very little. I should have done way more. I think below... I mean, okay. I got I got a lot of free coaching from friends. Like, Lauti coached me for like 25 hours of PLO. That should have probably cost me more than 10k. So, very little. I would say below $5,000. Germany gonna make it? I think so. It's very unlike Germany to choke. I don't think they're gonna win the tournament when they keep playing like this, but you know, we talk more about that in the show coming up today. How's the study progression? Any big leaks you spotted? I've done very little studying this week. I've had some issues uh, that are not poker related. So the, um, this is actually one of the main things I wanted to talk about today. So the, um, the things that I was having during scoop, I had like, I had like a, a very weird moment physically. Then after, on the last day of Scoop, I had kind of like a breakdown on stream, like not emotional or anything, but I just felt weird. I looked pale as shit. Um, so I've been having pretty big stress attacks um, where your body kind of shuts down. It's a very interesting thing, actually. I've talked to a lot of people about it today, um, or not a lot of people. I talked a lot. I did some sessions with like mental coaches and shit this week. Um, but I had a complete disconnect, so I pretty much laid on the couch, watched shows, went to the movies, ate food, like nothing. Um, so I feel like I'm, I'm, um, I feel like I've been pretty close to a burnout. Well, I am. So I went to the doctor, had my blood tested, had my blood sugar tested, all that stuff, because it's been pretty bad, to be honest. I even, I even had one in Hawaii. I had one right after Montreal. I had one after three days streaming after Montreal. Me and Marita walking down the street. So, like, my body was just shutting down closely. Just doing too much stuff. Uh, just saw your birthday video where thousands donate to organizations of their choice by your dad. Very heartwarming. Yeah, that was probably the favorite stream moments ever. Are you planning on having kids? Yeah. Watched the clip of the Notorious Five Deuce on YouTube yesterday. Couldn't help but noticing the salt and pepper difference. Do you think the stress in streaming and online poker had in it? Yes. Um, it's kind of funny. So the hairstylist I go to, the hairdresser, it's always weird for me to say, like, whatever word you use, uh, that I go see if Vlissinga, she's, like, super high level. She used to do, like, really crazy shit in Amsterdam and stuff. She went back to Vlissinga as well. And she said that the difference... She can, she can tell that my hair turned gray because of exhaustion and not necessarily by genes. There's a difference in the way it shows. It's kind of crazy. Could you retell the old story about running 300 into 100k or something, losing it all and do it again? I remember that from the poker static days. Wow, poker static. Holy shit. Yeah, um, I'm actually going to try and find that, all of that and I'm going to do something with that run. I pretty much just had $300 and... I decided to play heads up with it on full tilt. Uh, started at 1 2. Every time I want to buy, and I went up stakes. I went to 25.50, had like 6k, then I lost like an 18k pot or something. Had 1000 left, and then started crushing with that, and I ran it to 55k in one night. Are you going to play in any EPT tournaments this year? I'm hoping Czech players will be able to qualify next year when stupid legislation changes. My dream to play in EPT. Yeah, it's an awesome stage to play on. I'm not sure if, I, if I'll play one. I think there's a very small chance, to be honest. Very small. Mm. 
how are you planning on reducing your schedule to look after your health? Um, I think that what's really important this is that I start making roadmaps. So anytime somebody comes with an idea or I think about something, I contact people and I people that I want to do it with, people at Pokestars, people that run it up studios, you know, now that that news is out, I'm working closely with Jason too on stuff. Whenever that comes out, um, uh, whenever I have an idea, I immediately start talking to the people. I have plans with Team Liquid, Pokestars, you know, just even like a lot of stuff I can't even mention. Um, commentaries, commentary gigs, everything. And every time I think something is a good idea, it's like, okay, cool. Boom, I email people, I get it rolling. And it's another thing that I'm doing. So I think I need to make a roadmap. Like, for instance, somebody would come up to me and say, hey, I have a new idea for cooperation that where I have a schedule in which I can say, all right, I'll have time in five weeks. You know, I need to know, like, running orders of projects. I need to have, like, calls to action, reminders. Um, I think that I've already changed a lot. That's really helping me, though. So I think that I was on a good track. But, okay, so what causes stress attacks is, like, Okay, so move to Panama. We all know how stressful Panama was, right? So we have internet trouble in Panama. Then we have computer trouble in Panama. Um, I was streaming way too long. The days in Panama were too long. So I was streaming 12 hours almost every day. Um, so Panama gave me a lot of stress. I didn't enjoy living there. Um, then we move. Mirta goes with the stuff to Canada. I go to Reno. Reno was like five six days of fun but anytime i had downtime i did meetings we go to canada we have to set up everything i stream for like five six days straight i go to stones i do commentary on stones the rest of the day i'm like networking doing social stuff and meetings with running up there me jason and, and great Torp. so then from there i had the last session in stones i slept half an hour go on a plane then sleep on the plane get to holland uh, have like two days rammed with social stuff Go to Monte Carlo. I had nine, like nine to eleven days in Monte Carlo, uh, from nine in the morning, one the day, even like at one thirty. Have like very high intensive interviews. Have to record producing stuff, whatever. So three, four days in Monte Carlo, absolute jam packed. Go back to Holland, one and a half days of nonstop social shit. Breakfast with this person, lunch with this person. We go to Canada. We go to Canada Glamour concerts. Jet lagged. The next day, I play Scoop. Scoop goes poorly. So, you know, there you go. It's like accumulated stress and on top of like already having i kind of overexerted myself from costa rica and on so i finally got to watch you fight elke why did you hold back in that first why did you hold back that right kick in the first round felt like you didn't want to hurt them but that is <laughs> the opposite i uh, must have had a reason i don't even know which one you're talking about but i must have had a reason for it because i definitely wanted to, well not to hurt him but definitely to knock him out how many hours do you spend on uh how many hours a week do you spend on stream and stream related stuff? Um, I would say 12 hours a day. It's been like 12 hours a day consistently for uh, 12 hours a day consistently since I moved to um, uh, 12 hours a day consistently since I moved to uh, Costa Rica. Even 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 uh, WQ before that, I started doing more stuff. Thought about moving down stakes to build confidence back and relieve some stress. My confidence is like this. My confidence isn't low in poker at all right now. Mm. If anything, Scoop had this weird effect on me where I still lost a lot of money, but I got so close so many times in so many tough fields where I just had like full regular tables for twelve hours, not running particularly well, and still just getting chips and stuff. So I'm very confident about my game at the moment. I think it's the best it's been uh, in tournaments, so I don't really want to move to lower stakes, especially in the summer, because the tournaments are just good. So I feel like I'm treating a symptom, because bankroll-wise, I don't have to do it. So I feel like I'm treating more of a symptom than I'm actually treating uh, the cause of it. When did you start turning gray? Um, about five years ago, six years ago. I used to have some gray hair already when I was uh, like 27 already, I think, so seven years ago what would you say is the biggest challenge for people like myself who are better than average at live tournaments to transition to online um it's a more technical game so you have to accept that there's more technical math stuff involved so the reading patterns are different like stuff has to make sense from a game theory point of view when you try to sniff out bluffs and stuff and that's different from live 
life like you know you sometimes have that like um life you uh you sometimes just sniff it out you know that's a big difference do you think spraggy should transition to plo full time uh gg bankroll challenge when are you going back to holland uh november we decided not to go anywhere after because what are, what are we really doing right like we wanted to adventure want to discover places uh i can't move to new zealand or asia because the time zone with you guys doesn't make sense so i don't want to i don't want to leave like the european time slot right like i love you guys i want you guys always if it's evening or morning or afternoon i want you guys in in a part of my stream so uh, moving to new zealand would mean it's nighttime in holland and anywhere else in Europe, which is bad. Um, so it's going to be, if it's going to be Europe, it's too close to home, then we'd rather just go home. And most of Europe is like bad weather anyway. And are we really going to live somewhere just for good weather, so close to home? Like we're not really discovering anything new then, you know. Um, Mexico, I just don't really want to rely on Central American or South American internet anymore. That gave me so much stress. I think that'd be a huge mistake. Um, so internet's just not good enough and otherwise we'd have to go back to a place we've already been like I think we could get good internet in Costa Rica but then I feel like we're just staying away from home I think Mirta wants to get back to work as well so there's all that I know you don't answer bankroll question but as a general rule from your vast experience do you have any tips as far as percentage breakdowns of winnings to build it like what percentage of a cash should go back into the bankroll and what is profit I feel like when you go pro, you should have a poker bankroll that you can insert everything back into. Well, and then just only take out a, a set amount for cost of living, you know? That's why it's so important that you prove to yourself that you can make that before you even do it. This is really personal, but are your parents al alive? If so, are you close? Maybe you need some time with them if that's an option. Um, yeah, both my parents are alive. I have good relationships with my parents. I'm a little bit closer to my mom. Um, but... Obviously, I'm really good with my dad, as you guys know. My dad is just a bit tough sometimes with contact and communication and stuff. When is Blow Up Friday coming back? I mean, that would be a very bad thing to do right now. Let's just get healthy first and or get back on track first and see. I really do miss it, though. You, you got to know that. So, What's your thoughts on video-assisted referee? I think it's good. I think the video-assisted refereeing is amazing, but... We just need to work it out a little bit better. It's gonna get faster. Um, it's gonna get faster and faster. And I think that a game should always. Uh, I I don't think that like big mistakes are any have anything to do with the charm of a game. You know what I mean? Do you have any bad blood with other players? Sure, some of them. Like nobody likes everybody in the world. You know, people that do. You have to be careful about those. People that are friendly to everybody, I feel, are people that are very dangerous. And this might sound weird, but nobody nobody gets along with everybody. Some people are nice to everybody. And the people that I've met in my life that are always nice, always like interested, joking around with anybody. There's people who are friendly, of course, but... Like, person, people where I would say that guy has like 100% golden hearts. Like, Fatima's boyfriend is a good example. Raymond Slouter, Dutch tennis player, Fatima's boyfriend for a long time. One of the best guys I know. Like, one of the truly nicest, sweetest guys I know. And he doesn't get along with some people. And he is not, like, always friendly to everybody. You know what I mean? It's... Gotta be careful. Like, do you play or stream other games as well on Pokestars? Yeah, I play some Fortnite and stuff once in a while. I really want to... So when I go back to Holland, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up like, I'm going to have a setup with an Xbox, a Wii, or a Switch, an Xbox, a Switch, and a PlayStation 4. I'm going to have them all plugged in so that if I want to stream something, I can just pop in a game. I have a green screen, stream everything. So I can't wait to start setting that stuff up. Um, I think that will be pretty good. And... Um, like, for instance, let's say on a day where I don't really feel like streaming or I feel like I'm stressed or busy or whatever, and I just want to sit down and play a console game. I can just have, like, a lounge, a, a caster couch, and just stream it, play through, and then just do something like this, talk to you guys while I'm playing. 
Favorite most influential video games as a kid? No StarCraft, go younger. Zelda, for sure. Any Zelda. I like the first one, but especially the second one, Adventure of Link, and A Link to the Past, and Ocarina of Time are some of my best. Secret of Mana too, but I mean Zelda series as a series is crazy. How long did it take you to become a profitable player? Um, four or five months, but... How much time did you invest in learning and playing MTTs? None. I just... Oh, now? I just thought I kind of learned by playing again because I started playing them on stream. How did you come to the conclusion that you can play poker for a living? Did you regret your decision? It's the best decision I ever made, taking the plunge. But poker was a different time. Like, anytime somebody asked me about how I got pro and how long it took me, I got a little bit worried because people kind of want to use that experience for something that they do themselves. First of all, I made a very... Um, uh, irresponsible decision to go pro with the money that I had in my bankroll and my situation and my skill level. Um, I wasn't ready to be pro, but poker was just so easy and it's not anymore. So don't use answers like that to kind of make a decision for yourself. I was taking this week off from the tables, trying to focus on improving sleeping while I'm planning to go back and play the tables live. What is the one thing you're thinking about when you haven't played in a few days? Just going over the motions again. Like, really start thinking at the start, like, if you play 14 days in a row, like, your pre-flop game is going to be spot on. But, like, really know, really kind of remind yourself of the ranges and not being lazy and autopiloting, looking at who's in the big blind, who's on the button, that sort of thing. I'm planning to try and focus on playing strong ranges and staying disciplined. Yeah, but be careful because you could also missing a spot where you should bluff, you know. Just do what you know, but think about it well. Are there some regulars you play every day with that you dislike? Well, I mean, mostly people like Rob. It's like Rob6969, but he's like... He's, he's a huge bigot. He uses F-slur, racist stuff in the chat. He's, he's an absolute disaster. Like, people like that. I don't... I don't... I don't... I don't have any annoyance too, too often when I see people. To be honest, like, I, I don't, like... Tournament players, I generally like a lot of the tournament regulars. They're really cool. Like, a lot of them are fun to joke around with. <clears throat> what is Mir to do for work slash excuse the spelling of her name? Ah, the A is an E. Otherwise, you got it, that shot. Uh, she does voluntary work. She works at a, a university now. In Panama, she worked with, like, kids to teach them English. Now she works at a university where people have English as a second language and need to practice speaking and conversations and that sort of thing. Um, in Holland, she has a teacher's degree and uh, like social care. So anything related from people with tough families, um, kids with studying issues, um, that sort of thing. She's kind of like a counselor in a way. You're going back to the old schedule when you're in Holland? Yes. How did you quit smoking? Kyker asked. Um, I told a lot of people about it, that I was gonna quit. So it became an honor pride kind of thing. I, the first night I knew I wanted to quit. Uh, the first, I talked, what's really important there, this is how it might sound crazy, it's talking out loud to yourself. Like, tell yourself, um, you want to quit and why? In front of the mirror. Like, you do not want to smoke because it's done now. You you want to get healthy. You want to start working out a lot and it doesn't help when you smoke. It's bad because it'll decrease all the work that you put in in the gym. So that's what I would say to myself. And then I ordered, like, 10 Bacardi Cokes. I got cigarettes i put cigarettes and lighters everywhere and i got really drunk and i was like if i can get drunk by myself through the first uh through the first day then i'll be fine what is it about your current relationship that makes you feel different from past relationships that it makes you feel it will last until you're both old i don't know it's just a feeling it's just a general feeling plus we're such a good fit and we've been through like really high intense relationship stuff right like we moved in together pretty quickly, but we knew each other really well. But now we've been traveling. We've been traveling for eight months together. So we spend so much time together. It's never boring. Um, also, we communicate really well. We do have our issues sometimes, of course. and But just, like, there's no passive aggressiveness. There's no, like, never mind, I'm going to bed. You know, that sort of shit. I'm going to bed. And then the next day nobody says anything. And then all of a sudden it's good. Like, that sort of shit. It's toxic. It's toxic. I also feel like it's just, like, not really childish, but, you know, like, not not really what you do. It's more sabotaging a relationship than helping it. 
like passive aggressiveness is a, is a fucking toxic thing to a relationship so um if i feel that Mert is off then i will give her some space or i'll to ask her like what's wrong and then she'll tell me honestly and then you know we talk about it or whatever and of course we have fights sometimes but um like we really really communicate well like every fight that we've had is um contributes to getting stuff smoothed out it doesn't make it worse you know there's no like i fucking hate it when you do this and shut the fuck up that sort of thing it never happens have you ever had a stress attack from exhaustion when you've had when you're having good results at poker or only during rough poker patches only rough ones i feel like the adrenaline of winning is so easy to get you going plus you're not really it's you're a lot less stressed like if i was crushing then i don't think that i would have had these stress attacks but maybe just delayed them i've been taking poker seriously for about three to four years my game's a lot better than when i started but i feel like i'm not as successful as i should be in poker I don't have poker friends to widen my learning and I'm not good at self-study. How can I get better? Well, hire a coach. There's cheap coaches. If you you have to be able to invest in it. Or yeah, get something like raise your edge, bro, because they spell it out for you, but if you're also not good at looking at videos, if you're also not good at look, looking at videos and taking notes from it and everything, then I mean, you just got, you're just probably not going to make it then, brother. That's what you got to ask yourself, David. Thank you for the $3, but it's really like, you know, what, what do I want to achieve? What do I need, need to do to get there? And some of your problems are exactly stuff that you need to do to get there. So I would just set attainable goals. Study half an hour every week. Half an hour. Make it one hour after two weeks, you know. Don't set yourself up to fail. Hey Lexis, raise your edge, a one-on-one -on -one coaching program, or is it sort of a course that's built up on different levels? Uh, only I haven't played with the HUD for a while. You don't need to play with the HUD to use raise your edge. You can learn so much about everything, ranges, planning, strategy, everything. I mean, raise your edge helps me enormously, and I play without a HUD, so. Do you find it difficult to keep your emotions in check when you logically know you made a plus EV play, but it didn't pay off? Um, only when it's... Jesus Christ. Only when it's um, uh, only when it's a high equity situation. So if I do something plus EV and it doesn't work out, when I'm uh, last three tables in the 530 bounty builder, yes, I get annoyed. You're going back to the same flat in Holland somewhere else. Somewhere else. I obviously play lower stakes than you, and if I was suddenly put at a table like you, Lena Sidar, and I would have major issues because I don't have recent, in my case, any at that level. Yeah. It's tough. It's really tough. The comp competition is insane. I've been talking to a lot of regulars. It's kind of cool. Like a lot, like quite a few high stakes regulars have been reaching out, talking to me, whatever, giving me like also encouragement. I watched the stream. Like this guy that plays like two Ks and crushes and just reached out to me and said that he thinks I play really well and that I should just keep going and that he, you know, like a lot of other stuff that I don't want to toot my own horn. So don't necessarily have to re um, repeat, but. It's so nice that people do that. And they said it, I'm very tough to play, you know, like, uh, I do a lot of annoying things. So that's really, really cool. I've never played a Final Fantasy game in my life. It's so fucking crazy, Amok. I've never played Final Fantasy. It's... What's up, Desmond? So wonderful to see you, Lex. You're truly missed. Good to hear you taking care of yourself. I just want to know how much I appreciate your stream. You're often to pick me up when I come home from a bad overnight at work. Hope you understand how much you mean to some of the people that watch. That's amazing, Miss Creepy Weirdo. What would you say was the most inspirational moment of your life, either poker related or otherwise? Uh, the payoff and the freedom from choosing for poker, if you really look at like work related stuff. Um, it's kind of funny. It also taught me a lot about like, you know, working hard getting mentally strong, all that stuff. So poker taught me a lot in life skills as well. So I would say like inspirational, definitely going poker pro and learning everything that came along with it. Are you saying poker is much harder game right now, but it looks like anyone can win with a random online card dealing. I mean, you, you, the questions that you're asking just show that you really don't accept poker for the way it is or don't understand it. With a random online card dealing, this happens live too, brother. 
I don't, it's super toxic to think that way because you're pretty much not accepting a randomized luck factor. It's just pure math, you know, there's deviations. Some are like a mass deviation and some are very close to what averagely happens. So you're gonna have periods of time where for months you win about, you know, 50% of your coin flips. There's also gonna be months at a time where you probably lose 70% of them, but there's also times when you win 70% of them. So just saying that it's like random online dealing is just, no, I, I can guarantee you one thing. There's a few truths in a poker career. Not a single regular that wins calls poker stars, joker stars, or river stars. Not a single regular. Um, there's not a single, re single regular who thinks that online is rigged. These are all things that losing players say. People that lose. Because people need to have a reason why they lose. They need to put the responsibility somewhere else. They can't accept the fact that maybe they aren't doing the right stuff, that maybe they aren't as good as they thought, that maybe the game has passed them by, that, um, you know, people really think that they operate on an advanced level too quickly in poker, and when they then lose, they need to, like, lash out at something else, so it's just no way, mates. Have you tried using Prime Mine? I'm using it to deal with my shit. It's been pretty helpful. Uh, yeah, I have some other things that I use. I use some Headspace. Um, I use some Headspace... Also in breaks and stuff. Also, I feel like Prime Mine has like six minutes, which is a mystery to me why they do that. But it has six minute exercises. When you talk to poker players, I would assume that you have to do something for five minutes or less because of the breaks. But yeah, I don't know. I'll check it out though. I mean, Fedor and Elliot Rowe, that can only be good stuff. So I'll definitely check it out. Where do you see the longevity of poker for people going pro in 2018? Would you say that poker has enough juice? Yeah. For sure, you can make a lot of money in a short period of time. I want to know how loud it is. I appreciate the advice. I death watch videos and try to learn from it. When I said self-study, I meant reviewing hands and knowing right from wrong. I feel like I have the ability to make it. I guess hiring a coach would be the best option now. Thanks, Funky Less Than 3. I meant reviewing hands and knowing right from wrong. Oh, then just use Raise Your Edge, man. They'll just tell you what's right and what's wrong. Easy peasy, my friends. I think that poker is going to be around for a while, Nine Lives. Uh, I mean, look at what's happening in Europe. No, There's no way of telling if it's going to be an open market again. But, I mean, Portugal, Spain and France joining forces is such a good thing. India having regulated poker is such a good thing. The sports betting stuff and more states doing online poker in America is so great, man. You seem like a chill introvert, but could you see yourself running around doing commentary? Uh, commentary on poker stuff? Yeah, I kind of like it. I have, a, I have a thing coming up, a really cool one that you guys will enjoy where I'm going to do commentary. don't think I can announce it yet, but it will be over the next few days where I can announce it probably. But I have a pretty big one. That's going to be pretty awesome and hype. Scott Goodall. To put yourself and your ups and downs out there in the public world is a usually credible and respectable thing to do. Moreover, this kind of honesty and openness is exactly why I and your loyal community love you, bro. Fuck you, Lesson 3. Holy fuck, that's a nice message, dude. Shout out to fucking Scott Goodall, man. One of the most awesome people I've ever worked with. You say you don't use the HUD because you don't want to chat solely focused on stats, but you can hide the HUD in OBS. Have you considered going back to using a HUD? I've considered it. If I'm going to use one, at first I always said I want to make my decisions based on what you guys are seeing. But honestly, I think I'm just going to, uh, if I would use one, I'm going to hide it. Because to avoid that discussion, I would say, like, I think I've seen that this guy plays aggro in these spots or whatever. Are you playing WSP this year? Which team do you support in World Cup 18? I want Messi to win. Ugh. But it's pretty much just because of Messi for Argentina. Um, plus, I said they're drawing dead. I think uh, I'm supporting Belgium and England as well. I really like Belgium and England. I've always liked them. <clears throat> uh, I'm not playing any WCP. Like, putting that on top of it is... Uh, putting that on top of my travel would be really bad. Not really a question. Maybe you can talk about it a little. If you follow a streamer... You get to the point where you have spent so much time together, it kind of feels like you're friends even though you've never seen me. Also because we have some shared friends, acquaintances from the poker world. It's kind of a cool weird dynamic. Wonder if the rest of the community feels the same. Yeah. I see a lot of you guys as friends, for sure. Um, we know a lot about each other. And, 
you also share memories together, right? Like things in the chat. You have so many people that you know in common. I really hope if for, for whatever reason at a certain point that like the poker stream would stop, I really hope that everybody keeps talking in Discord together. I think they will, honestly. I think there's a really tight-knit community now. Oh, shit! We're gonna do some running. That's good for uh, mental health as well. Oh, yeah. Would you rather walk in a forest in a busy city or on a beach? I would rather walk on a beach. I, could tell you. I loved my mornings in Costa Rica. Maybe that's what kept me sane there because I was working a lot there too. I was super, super hyped as well. I still am, but it's just like, you know, after eight months of long days, your natural shit just decreases your energy. Giant grasshoppers everywhere or Team Netherlands never qualifies to the Euro or the World Cup? Motherfucker. I guess I'll go with the giant grasshoppers everywhere because I'll get used to them, I guess. I can never get used to over this pain. Used to this pain of not qualifying. How'd you fix your limb dick that microphone? Um I got this harness. It's a different one. I gave it the peel. What do you think about Portugal winning the World Cup? I mean I think they have an outside chance for sure, obviously. They play very dangerous. They're really good on the counter attack, but I don't know. To be honest, it's kind of weird. I felt like during the Euros they were drawing dead. I really think that it was just a really crazy thing that happened. There were so many things that played into that. Like big teams knocking other big teams out. I think that Switzerland had to score and Portugal had to win for them to go on from the three-team uh, group. Then Ramsey was injured for Wales, which took away the whole midfield there, which was a huge thing. Um, yeah. I mean, France was terrible against them as well. I think it was really, yeah, it was very weird. I do think they have, like, a better team now. At first, I thought they were drawing Deb more, but no big team is performing, so why not Portugal to be able to do it? Pinaldo seems in good shape, so. When did you make the jump to multi-tailing? Pretty quickly. Probably too soon. Do you ever wake up and think, fuck, I gotta do this again? Only during Scoop, but I'm always excited about Scoop, but those... It's just because, like, you don't allow yourself to take time off because it's so awesome. So it's a very love-hate thing, you know? WCOOP kind of has the same thing, but SCOOP is more intensive. Like, if you're downswinging, it just, it's just a lot to handle, but... Like, you're not gonna miss it either. And you shouldn't. So... What was really interesting... Okay, so... What the guy that I, I talked to, he's, like, a guru when it comes... I'm not a guru in, like, a spiritual way, but in, like, time planning. And everything and management and communication um uh communication is that he says that when you get stressed you get certain cognitive psycholo psychological uh notifications you get a little bit snappy you get a little bit angry sometimes you know that sort of thing when you keep putting yourself through that stress your body assumes this as the new reality and it starts protecting you from that because they say okay so he needs this or she whatever needs this right now to get through this period so your body stops giving you psychological hints that you're overexerting yourself so what happens then is you think you're fine you're like okay there's some small fixes i think that it worked you know and you keep going which is what happened to me in panama and then after a certain point you burned yourself out so much that your body says all right fuck this i'm done and it gives you a signal which is what i had like the stress attack I felt like I wanted to lay on the floor and just do nothing or, you know, like really, literally just not talk to anybody, get away from the situation that you're in, ground, like kind of ground yourself. And that's if you get those signals, like a burnout can like if you don't if you ignore those, then your body just fucking snaps and then it's done and you just have to lay in bed for months. And I've had like six of those attacks, so. Um, what I need to do now is why I need to do absolutely nothing is because you have to get back to the last level and in the last level you will, uh, um, you will kind of start recognizing those first symptoms, cognitive and psychological again, and then you can fix those and take a step back when you feel those. So I hope that I went back a level by doing absolutely nothing, not studying nothing, no emails, no work calls, nothing. Um because then I can see signals for what they are again, and it's not like every time I get a fucking physical signal. If I get another, like, stress attack in the next few days, or, like, tomorrow or next week, then we might have an issue. 
might have to take some more time off, but I don't know, guys. I'm going to take it as it comes, so I'm doing everything I can on that front. If you could be any animal, what would you want to be? A pigeon. <laughs> no, um, it could be any animal. What would you want to be? I mean, probably a killer whale or something. Orca, yeah. Something like that. Something on top of the food chain. Uh, whatever bird or something, maybe. I don't know, man. Or, you know what? I want to be a gorilla. Because I have, like, some of the most social interaction there is while being an animal and also being, like, strong. A gorilla, yeah. What are your next travel goals, artist year? We're going to go to Vancouver next week. So we're going to move. Like, Mirta hasn't been mentioning the exact date because I don't think she wants me to get destroyed but um <laughs> we're moving oh fuck we're packing tuesday moving wednesday yeah so we're moving to vancouver um that's gonna be the last stop and then back to home are you going to a white caps game while you're in vancouver most likely yes there's also a logic concert by the way in july that i'm gonna go to like so are you superstitious about good combos like this fucking king jack austin that works for me no even if the spot is there to take, fuck no. Nah, I mean, like, it's obviously it's a really strong hand, but look at, like, at a certain point during scoop, I think I lost all in with kings, like, 12 times in a row when we had, when we were favorites or, like, a few times I had aces. Just gonna keep taking the spots. How should I make, manage my $10 bankroll to make it a 1000 Um, You just need to start low enough and not worry about how you're gonna make it a $1,000, but how are you not gonna go to zero? And keep being in action and learning. Because everything is about learning. It's not about money when you have $10 or $100 online. Can you explain quickly how ICM works? ICM means that winning the most chips doesn't win you the most amount of money. So there are situations near a bubble where you have to lay down a reasonably good hand. Just because it's not worth it to take the risk. What's your preferred method of studying? Um, I really like uh, following study courses because they do a lot of the groundwork. If I would have to go into PIO and enter all the stats and population and think about all that shit. Phew, dear lords, that's way too much work. I get the impression you like rap hip-hop enough to have an opinion on it. What do you think about the current genre status? What was your favorite era? Honestly, right now is my favorite era. Because what's, what's Schoolboy Q, Kendrick Lamar, ASAP Rocky. Um, like really, I, I, love, I love Black Hippie Crew, Absol, J-Rock. J-Rock really needs a good beat for me to like his songs, otherwise they're a little bit too raw. But, like, Logic is so fucking good, man. Pusha T has so many good songs. Fucking Kendrick Lamar is the best ever, in my opinion. Um, what Kendrick Lamar, Lamar is doing, Schoolboy Q is producing also so much creative content. Asa Rocky has really chill albums. They're all trying different styles. They'll have, like, a more funky album into a more, like, downright lyrical album I, I think it's fucking amazing honestly I, I think that the current period in hip-hop is the best at what point in the tourney would you stop raising with pseudo connectors 20 bigs maybe i find it hard short stacked to raise pseudo connectors yeah 30 big blinds and lower i would say bear got epic claws like steak knives but bears are also more lonely like bears go alone like when your cubs move along bears are kind of alone from that point so What's the highest all-in every tournament you've played? Uh, 200s. No, wait. No, okay. So this sounds very degen, and please don't hate me for it. Well, you can do whatever you want with it. But um, when I played 200, 400s and 100, 200s, so I was just open sitting heads up, 20, 40k buy-in. Um, I would play Sunday tournaments. You would have the Sunday 500, uh, the Sunday Million, everything. Every Sunday million, every Sunday tournament, because I just played them for fun or whatever, or for a, a big score, I would go all in every hand until I doubled. And then I would play it seriously. So yeah, that actually happened. So $500 all in every hand. I mean, I've done it in like 1K Live tournament too, once, so maybe that one then. Oh my God, Sweden almost scored. Holy fucking shit. You see, that's why you know what team you're favoring, because I was hoping Sweden would score. Sorry to all the Germans in the chat, but, you know, it's not like you guys have been suffering the last few years. 
How did the fuck you meme start? Uh, S uh, I X X I Scotty started resubbing with a message saying fuck you, and then Croak started saying it a lot in like small donos too. So that's how it started. I find Discord cluttered and confusing. We actually our Discord looks really good. So like we have an announcements where you see if I go live, if there's no YouTube videos. Clip channels where you can see highlights. Explanations is a new thing we're working on where you can like ask me questions, situations, or hands, and I can make YouTube videos of that. So that's like a cool thing if you have a situation that you want. So here, like books, movies, food. General population is our general chat. This is where people just talk about anything. My beaker shirt was recognized in the bar. That's fucking awesome. So this is where people talk about anything. It's not safe for work, not gonna click that. Here, video games, battle royale, we have sports. Hand discussion where you can talk poker strategy, real heaven, where, you know, you can talk about each other and railing and everything, so. Our Discord is very organized, so I highly suggest that you just check it out. Um, it's a really awesome extension of the community. How many tables do you play at a time? I try to play four, almost never more than eight, apart from Sundays. Do you miss living in the Netherlands? To a certain extent, CLRs. I'm not retiring, man. I'm not doing anything. All I'm doing right now is to make sure that I can stream as much as I as much as I did. So if I if I wanted to retire, I'd probably like make the most out of it right now and see whenever it would not work anymore. So don't worry, man. I have no intention of retiring. Do you miss StarCraft? Um I miss grinding a game like that. Like the feeling, oh my god. I'm telling you, man, Germany doesn't look great. It's just. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I miss I miss grinding a game like that. I, I really miss. I, I just also don't have the peace of mind for it anymore. To just, like, play a game. I really I played Fortnite yesterday for a while. I played with Delore. And then I played with Spraggy for a while. I really enjoyed that, but. Just, like, sitting down, grinding a game? Fuck, man, that's been a while. Holy shit. You ever think a HUD while playing may just change things a bit? And if you're using one already, perhaps delve into new stats. I mean, of course it could change it a little bit. I don't know if it would be a net positive result at the moment. If I felt that way, I would have I would start using it. At which point do you switch from full DGN to responsible adults? Uh, pretty much the point being here to start it. Uh, well, no, there have there was one point where I switched to like being very responsible. It was around the kickboxing times. But I've told you guys before that I've given a friend a fuck ton of money before to solve some company issues. Um, and that I had a pretty big downswing at the same time. So, But I was pretty responsible back then. But I would say like the most responsible I've been is since three years ago, since me and Mert started dating. Will the universe continue to exist if Scotty then when wins the 25k pillow? <laughs> That'd be fucking crazy, but... I'd be fucking crazy, but, you know. Anything is possible. If Pokestars could get back in the States full force, would you and Jay Carver do a tour? We'd like to meet you. We might. Honestly, we might. Me and Jason get along really well. Like, we work together great. We respect each other. I think that we have a lot of similarities in the way we approach the grind and the way our work intensity is. So, like, me and Jason, whenever we have meetings, we... It's amazing. I also like him as a dude too. So, how do you see the coming years for Holland football wise? Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm gonna wait with that opinion. I think that Holland could be okay, but I'm gonna read from Peter Zwart, the Fall of Oranje. It's like the Fall of Orange. You know, the Dutch nickname. I'm gonna read that book. I can't wait to see because that guy's Twitter is fucking amazing. By the way, his opinions about football are awesome. Have you seen Billions in Showtime? If not, great show. Yes. I still watch his first two seasons. One of my favorite shows of all time. One of my favorites. It's actually crazy. Me and Mirta are re-watching Sopranos now. TV shows really changed. Like, the pace of them became much higher. Like, we're watching Sopranos now, and it's like... They were, like, more deliberate, slower. Like, same with... Uh, I'm pretty sure The Wire, if you rewatch it. How do you feel about Small Suited Aces? Out of position, possibly call a rear as a big blind. Like, sometimes you just got a 3 bet from the big blind, but they're really good defending hands. Just always call from out of position, pretty much. From the big blind, that is. How's life in Victoria? I hope you're doing well. It's upset the show. Victoria is amazing. Awesome place to live, honestly. 
Did you start feeling worse since that ultimate tilting climbing game with the hammer? <laughs> yeah, that's when it started. No! The stone of the fruit must break, that its heart may stand in the sun. So ah! must no, no, I tilted! No, I tilted! At no. the daily miracles of your life, your pain would not oh seem my less God. wondrous. Shut your fucking than mouth, dude. I tilted so Come hard. On, How did you meet your girlfriends? Uh, we went to the cinema movie theaters with mutual people when we were young. I heard some states are likely to legalize other types of online gambling with sports betting. Some states by 2019, others by 2020. I hope legal poker comes to California and be luxury. Long will be feeling like a million bucks. Yeah, uh, California would be so awesome to live. You could play online. Um, yeah, very true. The crazy thing is, is that states could already decide. So sports betting was actually behind poker on that front. So the new sports betting, state-to-state um, -state decision making, they're not ahead of poker in that regard, but it will draw more capital to states if they allow both so that's really good do you have gray hair from playing poker partly i think i've been on a pretty insane schedule since i was 20. i've had periods with like like when i was kickboxing i barely played poker i had a really normal life when i met fatima and raymond i had a really normal life for about one year i would just play tennis three times a week with raymond and then just chill and it's always been such either or with me What's your opinion on Daniel New Masterclass? How does it compare to Razor Edge? I think it's going to be very different. I think it's going to have a lot of live stuff in there. I think it also plays to a different audience. And it is only $90. I think it's very much worth it to just check it out. I mean, there's also if you get like $180 uh, spent on Masterclass, you get all of them. It'd be really cool to see the Steph Curry basketball stuff. Really, hear, It's really cool to hear people that are good at stuff talk about it. Did you have 100% of yourself on high stakes poker? 50% on high stakes, 100% on the big game. Do you gamble outside of poker? Nope. I live for poker after 70k downswing and I love the game so much. What are your biggest, what are, What in dollars are your biggest downswing? Uh, I've lost over a million twice over a period of time. Would you like to win the World Cup? Belgium. Hey Alex, I stumbled on a YouTube video of you calling down Doyle's bluff on the river. How good did that feel at the time? I felt fucking amazing. That's one of the best moments in my poker career. When you think about being a father, what kind of father do you think you'll be? If you have a daughter, do you think you'll stop all the boys from hanging out? I think so. It's kind of funny. Me and Mary to talk about that sometimes. I think I can be pretty strict. Like, strict but fair in a way. And, like, clowning around a lot. But Mirta thinks that I'll be uh, really soft on our kids. And she thinks that she thinks that if we have a daughter that she's going to be spoiled or something. Or that she's going to always have my ear on stuff. That's what she thinks. It's going to be very curious to see that. Um, if US would legalize poker, I would be living there next month. Can you talk about the downswing that you're facing? Um, it's pretty much running really bad in high equity spots. And high equity spots mean like, you know, we win a hot 33 here or there. We win a hyper for 2k. Like we have some wins. We have like a 12k cash. But... If you buy in for this much money, you really need to just hit like a five digit score once in a while. And every time that's about to happen, like last uh, 20 to 30 people, we keep talking about the top 20, top 30 curse. And that's pretty much what's been happening. So that's how we're downswinging. We get deep, but then we lose the hands that we need to win. So I think that this year during scoop, I think we could have a profitable year. I think I'm down like 90k a year or something, something like that. I think I could have a profitable year if I would have won four or five hands more. I could have had a profitable hand. That's how crazy the fucking MTT grind is. Yo, dispel the myth. Thank you for the 1500 bits, mate. Thank you. What I want to say is that without variance, the recreational players would never win and would not have incentive yeah. to play. GL bro, hope tomorrow you score something big less than three. Yo, Luxo, thank you for the $5. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's like you need to appreciate the variance because if this... If this, if there wasn't any variance involved, the game would not be here or what it is today. Do you golf? No, I would really like to though. I really like the game aspect of golf. I think that it looks amazing. Um, it feels amazing too. I think that if you look at a golf course, it looks so chill and it looks so well kept and nice. That's just something, that's just a place where you want to spend time, you know? And then the game is awesome too. Plus the nice thing about golf is when you suck at it, uh, you only have to hit one or two balls out of like 30 that are really good and really straight and you're so happy. 
what do you think of Neymar? Uh, I think Neymar, he's still pretty reasonably young. I think that his attitudes stops him from being one of the all-time greats. I think that he, his football quality is absolutely unbelievable. He could carry a team. I mean, he did that with Brazil in so many matches. But it's like, the attitude is just what's wrong with him, you know? He's so toxic. He's such a whiner. I don't think that if you... Like, I don't think that's a, just the right attitude to have. I, I would be... I would legitimately just be embarrassed if I was him. Like, embarrassed towards my friends and my family and my other teammates if I was acting like that. So, so I think he's one of the best players I've ever seen. But look at his attitude and Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho's happy. He's a fucking vibrant on the pitch. They could be the same player. But look at the difference. Look at how much how loved Ronaldinho is. And I understand that Brazilians love Neymar, but it's also like it's kind of the same when Portugal won the Euros. Nobody liked the way Portugal played, but I understand the Portuguese people loved it. You know that that it was amazing for them. That they're happy that they won with the way they played. Fuck how they played. Holland played like the ugliest football in the last two World Cups, and they got far, and I was super stoked about it. Like, in 2010, they pretty much annihilated everybody on the pitch, making a lot of fouls. And yes, it was very, it's harsh, and they made a lot of nasty tackles, like <laughs> the one from De Jong in the finals. They did a lot of nasty stuff, but as a Dutch person, you're kind of happy that they're winning, right? So I understand that people in Brazil treat Neymar as a god, and obviously, from my recent Twitter engagements, they uh, are very sensitive but you have to see, like, if somebody tells me, like, Robin flops a lot, Robin acts a lot. Yes, he does. He really does. And I'm not, I'm not pro at that. Like, I'm not happy with that kind of football. But as a Dutch person, all the other stuff that he does outweighs that. So, I don't know, man. If you look at Ronaldinho, if you look at people like Messi, I think that, I think that Ronaldo and Neymar have a very negative... That's, that's the reason why I, I have trouble... Uh, respecting them because of that part of the game it's not it's not because i like messi that i don't like ronaldo man we're fucking fortunate to have these two and because of ronaldo messi also probably plays better so i think that it's a fucking gift to see these two two guys play but if ronaldo he's physically so strong if he would just man the fuck up and not cry and like the ah the this on the pitch ah, when somebody touched your knee come on can you fuck off I can never support anybody who does that. And that's the reason why I can't support Neymar and Ronaldo. Neymar was my favorite player to watch. Favorite player to watch when uh, when I saw highlights from him from Brazil. I was so excited that he was going to come to uh, to Barcelona. I, I couldn't be happier. And then I saw him play. I was like, hmm, okay. This is, yeah, okay, hmm, okay. Now it's getting worse. Okay, this is, I can't root for this. That's why. That's why, you know, and it's like whenever you say something about it, people act like you attack their skill level or the player or what they represent to a country. And I understand that, you know, they are a symbol for a country, but it's because I don't have the the positive doesn't outweigh the negative for me. And for people from that country, it does. So what's your best poker memory? Uh, high six poker is really cool. I really liked the period where I was just sitting at home, sitting high stakes, playing heads up, that sort of stuff. And I really, I played a lot of home games in Holland. They were a fucking blast. Underground games with some crazy people. Would you kickbox with Elke again? Sure. We also put in the, like, bet contract that uh, whoever lost was always allowed a rematch. What's a good book to read to become good at poker? Um, uh... Uh, mental game of poker with Jared Tendler. When you lost that million twice, did you go broke? In which case, how did you handle those losses? Yeah, I went broke. Um, I didn't really care, honestly. I, I remember times where I would just lose 300k. And just be laughing and wake up and play like one-tenth the stakes or something and just be happy grinding. I was insanely good at dealing with that shit. What was the one poker event you had that was busted by the cops? It was in The Hague. It was in The Hague. It was like in an abandoned apartment building and we're on the seventh floor. It was a crazy night. Have you been to a World Cup before? No, I haven't actually. Never been to Euros or World Cup. Do you like Lyric? Yes. He's one of my inspirations when I started streaming. What was your biggest score on Poker Shares and which player did you bet on? Um, uh, I bet like 
thirty dollars on Tan Tan Sway, and I got like fourteen hundred back from that. How come you don't play draw games and stuff? I play some eight game now and then, but just purely playing those games is too boring for me. I have no interest in just learning those. Why did you first decide to start streaming on Twitch? I registered myself on Twitch in 2011. I've loved the platform forever, so. What was your first reaction when stars approached you to stream on a stupid site called Twitch? I mean, I talked to them about it. I already knew what Twitch was. What the fuck? Just drinking some Johnny Walker Blue Label while Germany... Watching Germany get the beat. Good times. Oh, I hate Blue Label. I bought two bottles of Blue Label once because they said I heard like Blue Label was the best when I started drinking whiskey. Because I heard that I was uh, allergic to any alcohol except for whiskey. Except for whiskey and um, uh, vodka. Those are the only two I wasn't allergic to. So I started, my friend started introduced me to whiskey and he got some we got a lot of good ones and stuff and but it really i bought blue label and then the guy at the store said wow nobody's ever bought this bottle before and i was like the fuck okay and we tasted it but i really hate the way it tastes it's like i don't like blended whiskeys it tastes like water kind of the, the, the structure so i went and i gave the bottle to that dude <laughs> that was funny he was so worried he was gonna get fired because he was walking around with the bottle so i told him my address so he could just come pick it up uh lex would you take 2k to quit drinking alcohol for one year fuck no dude never who made the beaker army t-shirt run it up studios designed it um i have we're very close in the like we're very close in the creation process like we bounce ideas back and forth like i pretty much say like how i'm envisioning something and then their artists will come up with something and most of the time, like this felt tired emote, for instance, you know, it's like something that I knew exactly how I wanted it. I wanted it like kind of like Ren and Stimpy style, but they just make it perfectly. Favorite drink? Beer. I really like beers and wine. Any idea why Jason Somerville stopped playing poker on Twitch? He was a pioneer for the Twitch community. Yes, he, there's articles about him. He created Run It Up Studios, so he's doing a lot of behind the scenes work, working with streamers, organizing projects. He's doing a lot of cool shit that still really benefits a lot of people on, on Twitch. Do you think like crushes like Fader, Lina, C. Darwin are running above expectation? Um, no, I don't think so in the end. I mean, Fedor definitely did. Fedor definitely ran above expectation. So is Justin Bonomo right now. So did Daniel Coleman. They're all amazing players, but they're not that much better than all the other people they're playing against. So it's definitely variance in small fields. But I mean, props to them. They work hard. So I'm not trying to take away anything. But it's not like Daniel Coleman was by far the best player in the world. And Fedor is by far the best player in the world. And... Like what Bonomo is doing right now. There's sick rushes of really good players. Have you ever thought about going to Macau a bit for the poker action? No, never considered it. I could not spend time there just waiting on a big game. I've never been that kind of a grinder. Because it doesn't sound fun. Do you ever plan on coming to Australia at all? I will 100% be in Australia at some point. Mirza really wants to show me that. She lived there for one and a half years in Perth and Sydney. Why don't you play cash games anymore? I'm focusing on tournaments right now. I'm, I have a very tunnel vision personality. I can't really focus on both. Have you considered buying a house and se settling somewhere? Uh, yeah, we're going to go back to Holland. Probably going to buy a house then. What's the one thing streaming has made you hate love about the poker community? Um, it's pretty... No, it's it's only made me love things about the poker community. Um, I would say, like, if I would say negative things, some saltiness or something, but... I think that's on Twitter and YouTube. It's probably even more. No, like, I don't know. Streaming has put me in touch with an amazing part of the poker community.